Hey guys, it is John the Quant here. Um, we're not doing anything too exciting today, but definitely necessary, definitely a skill that you need if you're going to succeed doing this kind of stuff. So what we're actually going to do today is we're going to be pulling price and stock metadata in from various sources on the web, and we're going to end up using this information to uh, research some alpha factors later on. So it's absolutely necessary, maybe not the sexiest part of the gig, but definitely necessary. All right, let's go over to Colab and get started. All right, guys, here we are in Colab. All right, in this notebook, we're going to load the prices and for the S&P 500 and its constituents from the last 10 years. 10 years is a very rough estimate. We're going to go back to 2009 um, on our prices. So um, we're going to use all this data for the alpha research work. It's very important. So let's go ahead and import some things. Um, I just set warnings to ignore. Um, so that I don't just get a bunch of you know little red things popping up everywhere. This part is not important. Uh, further on, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Finance stopped supporting its API. So it, a lot of old packages that used to work just a few years ago, they don't work anymore. So um, in order to get around them, we've got to do this fix Yahoo Finance, and then we'll need Y Finance to um, bring in the prices from Yahoo Finance, and the rest of these. Um, are for web scraping and I will talk about them a bit later but these two are the important ones if you're trying to follow along here okay fix Yahoo Finance and then Y Finance so we just install those and then we're gonna import pandas data reader we'll need pandas we'll need numpy we'll need Y Finance date time date time the um, sys JSON pathlib and these two again are for a web scraping thing that I was doing and I'll talk about them in a bit they turns out they're not very important and this one going along with a chromium browser for the web scraping also didn't end up using that and I'll get into why in a little while alright so the first thing we're gonna do is scrape a list of the S&P 500 constituents off of the Wikipedia page this is the Wikipedia page we can have a look at what it looks like here see it's a big table it's got everything you want to know S&P 500 component stocks, blah, 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 blah. And we're just going to pull that off with pandas' read underscore HTML function. And having a look at this, we got the symbol, security, like this is the symbol, this is the actual name. Um, this column ends up not being important. If you remember, back here was a bunch of links. We don't need that no more. The got the sector. Um, sub industry I guess where where is the company located what date was it first added to the S&P 500 which I kinda wish I'd kept but that's fine and the date when it was founded so the first thing we want to do is uh, if we look through this again let me open this link up and I should stop closing it um, we had a bit of problems with some of the symbols having periods in them and that confuses why finance so we go through that and replace the periods with hyphens all right this is generally used um, on Wikipedia it's like dot a for the a class stock dot B and so on but uh, on Yahoo Finance they use the hyphen so we just replace that and now going down we're going to get the S&P 500 constituent price data since 2009 from Y finance so we're gonna start that on 2009 January 1st, and we'll end it 2021, August 1st. And just initialize an empty dictionary, and then we'll run through all of the symbols in this data frame here, and put those into our dictionary, all right, and get the, um, get the historical prices from y, fin y Finance using this bit of code right here. You can see the price dictionary, whoops, See the price dictionary, whatever A stands for, it's got all of them, American Airlines here, got uh, open, high, low, close, volume, dividends, and stock splits all the way from January 2nd, 2009 through July 30th, um, 2021, and so on. There's a bunch of them, 500 or so, right? So this one, this BBWI, I had a closer look at this because this, this is Bath and Body Works right here. And until very recently, August 2nd, it turns out, it was called L Brands. OK, 
okay, right here. On August 2nd, 2021, L Brands completed the separation of the Victoria's Secret businesses into an independent public company. So Victoria's Secret is now VSCO, and L Brands, which had, had the symbol LB, the stock ticker LB, is now BBWI. So that's why I'm looking at this one, is because it changed right before... Um, the data that we're getting we get went through August 1st and this changed on August 2nd so I was just checking to see if um, the data that we have is still applicable to the S&P 500 as it is now with BBWI instead of LB and it is it looks good so then uh, we have it in a dictionary I just turned it into a big data frame and um, the way I did that was I used the the keys so I created a data frame that was just this using the data frame from MMM and um, then I got the uh, I made a ticker column that had the symbol in it and then just cycled through everything in that price dictionary through all the keys concatenated the data frame that was on so like sticking this one and this one together and then creating another column at the end that had the ticker symbol in it. So I ended up with open, high, low, close, volume, dividend, stock splits, and a ticker column. And because these are stacked and we're going over and over and over 2009, um, January 2nd, 2009 through July 30th, 2021, we ended up with 150. What is this? This is way more. That's uh, one, one and a half million. Um, rows there but we can use this we can pull out here I pulled out the closing price of Tesla um, and just plotted it to have a look at that and then I did the same thing with these stock splits here you can see the only stock split that Tesla has had is a 5 to 1 stock split that happened um, last year it was kind of big news they did a 5 to 1 stock split so the price per share dropped significantly but then it built back up um, to where it was really fast. I hope you guys remember that from the news. It was a big deal at the time. And then now that we've got the data in a way that I like it, how it looks good, I'm just going to store it. So I've created an H5 file, okay, which is an HDF5 file, and open that up with HDF store from Pandas, and then just put it in the SP500 underscore prices table. And the good thing about this HDF5, this H5 file, is that we can search through the table before loading it. So we can only load what we want, and that makes it uh, much faster to deal with. As you can see, we have, like we said, what do we have? One and a half million rows. Um, that's quite a bit. If we don't want all of those rows, we can then search for it and only import the rows that we want, the rows and columns we want. So that's a big deal. Now the next thing I wanted was uh, it's always good to keep track of an index when you're talking about alpha research. So we're, we're going to get the S&P 500 since we're using the S&P 500 stocks individually. We're going to use the S&P 500 index and we need it over the same period. And I got this from stook.com. Let's go to stook and have a look. This is what the stook homepage looks like. It is not in English as you can see, but down here. S&P 500, got it set to 10 years, got a nice graph. Um, it's not on a linear scale, but that's not important right now. Uh, the important thing is that it's really easy to pull the pull data from stook.com. So that's always an option, stook, find the uh, URL, and you can just do read CSV from it. Um, and that'll give you the date, open, high, low, close, and volume. So looking at the head and tail of this, it goes all the way back to 1789. That's when the S&P 500 apparently started being listed, which is just crazy, right? But then it goes all the way through um, whenever I ran this. It was uh, September 1st, 2021. So plenty of um, data there, as much as you could possibly want to work with. And I just saved the whole thing, all right? In that same H5 file, okay, asset underscore data, um, dot h5 in a new table called historical underscore sp500 uh, that's where I saved this so I can go into that one file I can move the one file around I can go into that one file choose which table I want search through it and then only load the things that I'm interested in now the last thing 
that I wanted was uh, more of a metadata, um, not the prices, but other information about the stocks. And NASDAQ has that, you guys can see this, um, these tables, okay, symbol, name, last sale price, net change, percent change, and market cap is what's listed here. There's actually more information, I think, in the data when you download it as a CSV. Now there's um, Amex, the New York Stock Exchange, and NASDAQ, and these are, these are different, all three of them, and you can download the CSV of them. And when I was talking about the web scraper earlier, uh, this right here was my attempt to build a web scraper that could just download those CSV files for me. And I was unable to get it to work. Um, I don't know HTML that well. So, all right, so how it works is there's no way to just do a read CSV and get these. So what I was actually building was a, a sort of bot that goes to the website and clicks the download CSV button. But uh, since I don't know HTML very well, I was unable to uh, get it to click that button. Um, there's also, there's always in web scraping, there's always a matter of ethics. And um, my thought was, I want to build this thing. I think it's interesting and I'm only going to use it uh, a few times. It's not going to be something that goes through and, and you know, clicks download CSV every like three seconds or something. So I felt like it wasn't too unethical to build this, but there are definitely ethical questions involved with any kind of web scraping activity. And um, you definitely should do your research into what is an accepted practice before you do anything like that. But in any case, it didn't work. That's why I said all that uh, web scraper stuff up at the top was not important. I could not get it to work. Um, I do intend to fix it later because it is just kind of annoying, tedious to have to go through and download the CSV files and then place them into a folder and so on. But that's what I did. I downloaded them manually, placed them into a folder, and then I um, made a metadata data frame using pd.concat, kind of the same as with the, uh, the, the prices data frame earlier. I started off listing the exchanges, which were NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange and Amex, and then um, read in the first one, and then went through and kind of just concatenated the the next two files onto the end of the first one. And it came out with symbol, which is good, name, name of the company, the last sale price, the net change, the percent change, market cap, which is very important. And we're going to use that a lot in alpha research, that market cap stuff. And then the country that... I guess the stock is based in, the company's based in. Um, the IPO year, which is a big deal, it's gonna let us um, talk about the age of the company, which is a which is a decent alpha factor that we'll talk about. Uh, volume, what sector is it in, and what industry is it in? And I'm thinking these two will probably end up being used mostly for risk management if we wanna angle our risk a little more toward one sector or we're worried about that sector collapsing, so we need to pull the risk back. In any case, um, this is what we got, and we ended up keeping, all right, symbol, last sale, market cap, IPO year, sector, and industry. Then I'm just cleaning up the column names, making them all lowercase, and replacing spaces with nothing. So I've got symbol, last sale, market cap, IPO year, sector, and industry. Have a look at it here. It's got the symbol in there, the sale, uh, IPO year, etc. Now, looking at the types, I know I want to be able to use last sale as a number. I want it to be numeric. It's an object right now. So we really need to get rid of this this dollar sign. And if there's like a thousand in there, it'll have a comma. So we need to get rid of commas as well. And that's what this cell right here does. Okay, last sale, we're replacing dollar signs with nothing and commas also with nothing. And then we're changing it to a floating point number. And then IPO year, this one, that is an, um, it's a floating point number right now but that doesn't make any sense. I just want to treat it as, as an object rather than as a number. I'm not going to be doing any math with it. I want to treat it as an object so I can treat it kind of as a category. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to change it to a string of zero if, if it's a missing value. Otherwise, um, change it to an integer and then change that to a string. So I'll end up with the object 2021 here. You can see what that looks like. Got this 
it's 0, 2021, 0, 0, 0, etc. These are all missing the IPO year. And the last sale price has changed into a floating point number, which is great. So now I'm just going to save that. Same file again, asset underscore data dot h5, saving it in the stock underscore metadata table, and then checking the size. It's not, it's actually not very big, which is nice. And then I downloaded it, and in Colab, I moved it into my um, Google Drive Colab Notebooks folder and just saved everything. And that's it. Let's go back over to in person and uh, we'll talk about what we're going to do next. There you go, guys. Uh, hopefully that all made sense. I don't think it was very hard. I really don't think it was. Actually, I thought it was pretty fun when I was doing it, but maybe you guys don't think it was that interesting. But it's definitely important. It's something we have to do before we can move on. So I'm glad we covered it. Um, if you have any thoughts, all right, maybe some ideas about uh, that web scraper or the ethics behind it, go ahead and leave me some comments. Um, if you learned anything, I want you to like the video. And if you want to keep learning, want to keep coming back, go through the whole alpha research process with me, go ahead and subscribe. All right. We're going to get some new content out soon and I'll see you guys next time.